to have one of these. Could probably do with one of these. See if I can avoid knocking it over. One of these. So uh, in the last couple of videos, we've been looking at the big muscles of the hip joint that move the femur, move the hip. And um, we then looked at the deep lateral rotators of the, of the hip. Um, and now we're going even deeper and we're going to look at the bones of the hip. So these are the bones of the pelvis. Um, we've looked at the femur uh, in terms of the trochanter the trochanters and the femoral head and the femoral neck and things like that. So this is going to focus on the bones of the pelvis and also all of these lovely ligaments. There's quite a lot going on here and if you compare the bony pelvis with the pelvis with bones and ligaments on it, you can see that the ligaments add quite a lot to the structure of the pelvis and of course we've got the last part of the vertebral column in here as well. We've got these lumbar vertebrae and then the sacral vertebrae down here and then an ending is the coccygeal vertebrae down here. So what are we going to do? We're going to look at the bones of the pelvis, then we're going to look at the interesting bony points of the pelvis that muscles attach to and that you can palpate on yourself or patients or other people. And then we're going to look at the ligaments, the major ligaments of the pelvis, and some of the spaces and shapes that they form, which other structures then run through. So they're rather important and useful. Um, and they also kind of hold everything together and they're important in childbirth and things like that. Okay, right, so then, to start. So what have we got here to concern ourselves with? Well, an awful lot. Um, to start with, this bone here, which is now a single piece, a left one and a right one, is actually formed from three bones. So in the child, we find three separate bones um, at a very young age, joined by um, a cartilaginous um, joint here, right? So in the, in the fetus, when these bones form, they form as three separate bones. And in early development and in the child, we have three separate bones joined by kind of a Y shape of cartilage, linking the the ilium up here with the ischium down here and the pubis here, all right? So pubis, ischium, ilium, and they, they all meet here within the acetabulum. And that's the origin of many of the names of the bony parts. So we talk about the pubis, don't we? Um, and we talk about the wing of the ilium, and we talk about the ischial tuberosity, and that's why, because they're three separate bones. In the adult, after these uh, cartilages have ossified and become bone, and there's no real sign of them within the acetabulum, um, we have this bone here. Um, and it's interesting because lots of things go through the holes and attach to the bony prominences, uh, and we can palpate the bony prominences to find our way around the patient. So what have we got? Well, should we start at the bottom, no pun intended, and work our way up? If this is the ischium, then this is the ischial tuberosity. Really big lumpy bony bit, and it's big because the hamstrings attach here. So here's the ischial tuberosity. Um, and this is the pubis. The pubis then, if this, if this is the obturator foramen, we have these two bits of bone here, and these get called rami. Each one is a ramus. Ramus just means branch, as in a branch of a tree. So this is like a branch of a tree connecting the pubis. And we might call this the, the ischiopubic ramus, or you might call this the inferior ramus, or the inferior pubic ramus, and this the superior pubic ramus. And if this is the body of the pubis, pubis then we've got this, this pubic crest here, and this pubic tubercle there.
which are palpable. So the pubis is a definite bony landmark that you can palpate on yourself and other people. Um, if we stay down here, do you see this? So this is the ischial spine. So we're this is the ischial tuberosity. We're down in the ischium. This is the ischial spine here. Um, and this gets called the lesser sciatic notch and the greater sciatic notch. And this ischial spine connects to other structures, as we'll see in a moment, to form more foramen. But you need ligaments to be able to do that with. In the ilium, we have the iliac crest here. So the iliac crest, and this is the wing of the ilium, so the iliac crest is at the top. Now where the, the iliac crest ends anteriorly, we have the anterior superior iliac spine, commonly abbreviated to ASIS, ASIS. Of course, if we have an anterior superior iliac spine, we must have an anterior inferior iliac spine, and no doubt a posterior inferior iliac spine as well, hmm? right? So if that's the anterior superior iliac spine, then this here is the anterior inferior iliac spine, and this is where uh, the muscle of rectus femoris going into the thigh comes from. So the anterior inferior iliac spine, anterior superior iliac spine, iliac crest. So if we follow the iliac crest posteriorly, then yep, it ends here as a posterior inferior iliac spine. Very palpable lump, big bony prominence there, which you can palpate on yourself and you as we're going along, you can palpate all these things on yourself, right? It makes it real. You've got a pelvis. Around here, we have the posterior inferior iliac spine. So here's the posterior superior iliac spine, posterior inferior iliac spine around here. And look at the level these are at. On the other side of this bone, there's a synovial joint. We have an articulating surface with the sacrum. So this is where the sacrum meets the ilium. So we have the sacroiliac joint here. And there's a, there are two big surfaces. There are two big surfaces of um, cartilage meeting there in kind of a joint of, of, of a particular shape. So it doesn't move much, but it can move. Um, and it's all held together tightly with ligaments. Okay, that's the bones and the bony bits. Let's add the ligaments to our bony bits. Let's tick off some easy ones first. This, this here was the obturator foramen. It's now covered by the obturator membrane. Um, this ligament here you may recognize. It's running from uh, the pubis here and the anterior superior iliac spine. Um, so this is the inguinal ligament. So this is where we find the uh, abdominal musculature, the anterior abdominal wall coming around, curving around and forming the, uh, the inguinal canal here, right? Under here we've got the pubic symphysis, the fibrocartilaginous joint in the midline there. Um, uh, if, we, if we just jump to the top, because the stuff I want you to remember is in the middle. Right, see this ligament up here? One on either side. This is running between the ilium and the lumbar vertebrae. So this is the iliolumbar ligament, right? As we go further down in, as we go further down in here, we have these ligaments that are running between the sacrum and the ilium. And these are, these are sacroiliac ligaments, except these are the anterior sacroiliac ligaments, because if we turn it around, we find a collection of posterior sacroiliac ligaments. Okay. Now these ligaments are particularly important. They're, they're part of the joint capsule. They're blending with the joint capsule, but what they're doing is they're, they're transferring the body weight through the vertebrae into the pelvis and then down into the lower limbs, a bit like a suspension bridge. So this joint 
is held together by ligaments and by its shape and that sort of thing. But these ligaments are kind of, they're, they're supporting our body weight and they're holding all this together. The ligaments themselves are transferring some of the forces and making the joint as a whole stronger, not just by holding the joint together, but by transferring the weight through the ligaments to the bones and down the lower limb. I hope that makes some sort of sense. So these things are sensibly named, right? Iliolumbar, ish, which way around it goes. Iliolumbar, sacroiliac ligaments. Now remember that because these bony bits we were looking at earlier, I said this is the ischial tuberosity, this is the ischial spine here, right? And here is the sacrum. So this ligament here, passing between the sacrum and the ischial tuberosity is the sacrotuberous ligament, sacrotuberous ligament. And the ligament passing between the sacrum and the ischial spine is called the sacrospinous ligament, all right? Sacrotuberous, sacrospinous. And do you see what happens? By adding those ligaments, we've made some new foramen. We've made two new holes. So this becomes the greater sciatic foramen, and this then becomes the lesser sciatic foramen. So we need the bones and the ligaments to make the foramen. If you take those ligaments away, we lose, lose those foramen. If we add the ligaments, we then get those holes. And through those holes we've seen various important structures pass. Uh, you can see the, this is the greater sciatic foramen here, right? There's the sacrotuberous ligament, sacrospinous is under there. Here's piriformis, the muscle passing through um, the greater sciatic foramen, and with it is the sciatic nerve passing through the greater sciatic foramen. So the ligaments are important, and so are the bony prominences in understanding the anatomy of the pelvis and the structures that are formed, right? So there's not really that much going on. Um, those names aren't too difficult to remember. Um, but if we're relating this to the hip joint and to the femur, um, I may have mentioned these before, but we have these lovely ligaments as well, and these are also sensibly named. And while we're thinking about the bones of the pelvis, it's a good time to think about these ligaments. So the head of the femur is pulled into the acetabulum, and the acetabulum is quite a nice ball and it's quite a nice socket to a ball and socket joint anyway, and it's got a labrum that holds it all in. But the ligaments that run from the pelvis to the femur, do you see how they spiral around? All right, so they're, they're spiraling around a little way. And we said that um, because of the spiral nature, that when you extend your hip behind you, this is posterior, so when you extend the hip behind you, those spiral ligaments all tighten up, which make it very difficult to rotate the femur because it's pulled into the joint by those spiraling ligaments. But when we move the femur anteriorly, that spiraling of those ligaments unwinds a little bit, which makes it easier to um, rotate and move your, your femur around. And you can do this yourself, right? Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and have a look at those videos about the muscles of the, the big muscles of the, of the hip. Um, now these three ligaments forming the spiral have three names depending upon the bones they attach to. So this ligament up here is coming from the ilium, so this is the iliofemoral ligament. Um, this one inferiorly, which is a little bit more pubic-y, gets called the pubofemoral ligament, and then posteriorly from the ischium, which has been cut on this model, this is the ischiofemoral ligament. So nicely, we've got a lot of sensibly named ligaments um, around here. So if you learn the names of the bones and you learn the names of the bony bits, then you can work out the names of the ligaments when you look at them. Okay, 
So that's it. We've looked at the main bones. We've looked at uh, the bony bits of the pelvis that you can palpate, bony landmarks. Um, and we've looked at the ligaments of the pelvis and how they make those extra foramen. And then we've looked at those ligaments attaching the femur to the pelvis. All right, easy one. Um, okay. <clears throat>